Oops. Give me that! Mother, be careful. That crazy thing's got a mind of its own. Receiver 2 is a single-player first-person shooter where immersion refires is the key component of the game. If you think about it, and the more you watch this review, it may feel more like a point-and-click adventure game. Most of the talking points in this review will be cross-referencing themselves a bit all over the place, so I try my best to lay a foundation in visuals and sound first, before going into gameplay and story to tie it all together. But I'm getting ahead of myself, so let's take a small step back into the past. Back in 2013, Wolf Fire Games has taken part in a 7 day FPS challenge and conceived Receiver 1 as a result, focusing and exploring on gun handling, randomized levels and unordered storytelling. It did its job, and quite well at that, in the beginning focusing on one weapon, the Colt M1911. Two updates added the Glock 18 and the Revolver, each with their own mechanics and modding support. I didn't dip deep enough for the mods, but stayed a bit for the vanilla handguns. They were decent enough for a game that was supposed to be developed in 7 days. Fast forward to April of 2020, 7 years later and precise to the month, Receiver 2 released. Same as its predecessor, it had its normal roguelike mechanics but has a ton more story put upon its shoulders. We'll get to it, though I would like to talk some other things first. Receiver 2 plays in a very urban and modern world, very akin to large cities with skyscrapers. New York would come to mind as well as a few other cities. Most of the environment is relatable too. You walk through an assortment of apartments, construction sites, alleyways and various rooftops. Not high fidelity, but in the context of the game, it is all you need and, in my opinion, the intention of the developers in a lore sense. Considering the game plays in an urban area, you also not only recognize the locations, but also some objects, though they are used sparingly and illogical. Some chairs like in a waiting room, hospital beds that are strewn about for some reason, and staircases. A lot of staircases. Like I said, most of the locations are familiar and should some look out of place, there may be a reason for it. The one part of the game that is graphically more attractive is, of course, the weapons you wield. The classics of the M1911 and the Glock come back with quite literally a vengeance, but other contenders are there as well. This time they are separated into two definite categories, automatics and revolvers. They look good, shoot decently and every part of the weapon is animated and important. It's not just a fancy accessory, it's your only lifeline out there, so it is looking the best it can. It is also trying hard to work correctly, most of the time. As you discharge your firearm, you may not quite notice it first. The more you play, the more it is apparent. Your character is flinching, closing his eyes as the gun fires. He never gets quite used to it, but there is an option to turn it off. I discovered it only until after I finished my first few playthroughs, so most of the footage will be strobe like galore. Apologies in advance. As for music, there are 5 tracks in the base game for different levels and one more for the transition between levels. The compound update has added a few more. For people who expect an hour of bangers, this is not quite it. Repetition and dynamicity is the name of the game. Quite literal in that sense, as you have a younger bold vocals added into the mix if you are close to a story advancing element, or a more intense variant of the bass soundtrack as you aim on a target or are being pursued. This tape is designed to test your focus in the face of distraction. I really hate that. I really, really, really hate that. The music between levels does not exactly feel like winning the game itself, more like moving towards a goal. 
I would associate it with words like learning, mystery and calmness. It is definitely elevating and unique for this type of game. Very nice. But not only a vocalist and composer of Two Steps From Hell was on this wide river game, but Leo Wiggins as well. Some of his contributions, namely the Dread X collections and the biologist of Desolate. In Receiver 2 he becomes the guide throughout the game, though more in a mental and metaphorical sense. But he's not just a monotonous voice played by a tape recorder, he has a sense of humor where applicable. Well, the peacemaker, the equalizer, the Colt 45. <clears throat> uh, if you really want to be sure that a gun will fire when you pull the trigger, you need to do a press check. Make sure your finger is off the trigger and pull back the slide with your supporting hand. Uh, calm down, John Wick. Just enough to see if there's a cartridge in the chamber. His voice, even through the ever so slightly compressed audio of the cassette player, is calm, but serious. Teaching you about relatively foreign concepts, at least in the beginning. Now, we are at the meat and potatoes of it all. That being the tapes and game slash gunplay. At the base level, 2 is the same as its predecessor. You have gun, gun has bullets, you shoot turrets and drones with said gun. Depending on how many runs you survive in a row, the turret variations change and additional enemies get introduced. But never too many that you could not handle learning their behavior if you take your time. Turret skeleton to get you acquainted with the weak points, drones, gun shields and ceiling turrets with the occasional surveillance camera. You may have to be careful about movement because sometimes you want to balance on a narrow ledge to climb stuff and suddenly you sprint when you just want to edge closer. Try to crouch. That should disable sprinting as long as you stay crouched. Above all, Receive 1 was about gun handling, but 2 cranks the realism dial from half ass to quadruple ass. The stakes are higher than ever, with ammo more sparingly spawning, the higher you go, hacking turrets as a high risk action to conserve ammo, glass shattering and hurting you with its shards if you stand too close, and you weapon jamming. There are three different types of gems that can occur, each with their own level of complexity. Paleo to eject, nicknamed stovepipe because of the bullet pipe sticking out of the ejection port, Failure to feed, which, as the name implies, consists of firing but not successfully recycling the next bullet into the chamber. It comes in a few variations depending on the automatic you use or how well the magazine is fitted into the weapon. God, I hate the high point so much! The last is arguably a Rubik's Cube puzzle at first, that being the rare double feed. The loaded magazine has overpowered the loading mechanism of the automatic you hold and tried to fit two bullets in one barrel. Not the end of the world, but it goes as well as you can expect. The former two gems can be resolved quickly, even combat if you have the time, though you still may want to take cover, as receiver is a game best played slow. The keys I describe shortly are the default settings, though the game also encourages you to find your comfortable key settings. Failure to eject is simple enough. Wreck the slide of R, the next bullet should be loaded by then and you are free to fire away. Fear to feed is the same shtick, though a bit less noticeable because the gun looks fine and should be able to fire from a glance, but no bullet is in the chamber. Knock the magazine into place with Y, called tapping the magazine. Loosely fitted magazines don't play nice with the bullets feeding into the barrel, so that needs to be taken care of first. Rack the slide of R, now that we coerce the magazine into working for us, and then the fun part. Bang! All part of a basic procedure in readying weapon to fire. Tap, rack, bang. This drill is also instructed in the tapes you collect. The mind kill degrades the condition of firearms, making them much more likely to malfunction. You can clear most malfunctions by tapping the magazine to make sure it's seated, racking the slide to chamber a new round, and then bang, you're ready to go. Tap, rack, bang. Now to the final boss, making an automatic work after double feed. 
This is more of a maintenance than most other gems and requires a more elaborate approach and a combination of keys. First, the same procedure. Wrap the slide but engage the slide lock of the automatic while holding the slide back. In most cases, the key to do this is first R and then T. This locks the slide in place and the bullet is not in between a firing pin and the hard place. Eject the magazine with E, simple enough. The bullet that was supposed to be in the chamber and the sped bullet now both fall out and one of them has to be picked up after. Reinsert the magazine with Y and release the slide lock with T again and you are clear to fire. I'm sadly not John Woo enough to do this in one second yet, at least there was an achievement for it. There's another interesting detail I've noticed during testing the different gem clearing methods. It is more reliable to clear the gems just mentioned while facing forwards or downwards instead of looking up into the air. The bullet seems to get unstuck more easily that way and makes you less likely to have to pull the slide back again after fixing the double feed. Same goes with reloading bullets into a revolver. If you look up, they will fall out again. If all of this control scheme is tough to handle during gameplay, I get that. The developers thought so as well, and so they added a handy quick reference list of all the things you can do with your equipped weapon at the moment's notice. Practical, and it has been there since Receiver 1, so if it ain't broke. By the way, did you notice how I called handguns and guns automatics in this section? Revolvers don't have that problem. They don't jam, and the only problem you might have is with expanded casings not being easily extracted, making you push the case extractor once or twice more. My god, Snake and Ocelot were right all along, revolvers are much better, right? They also have that neat little spinny thing. Not quite. The thing about the gun community is, there are oftentimes people who adamantly believe that one type of weapon is always superior over the other. Some swear on the AK, others think the AR weapon system is in non plus ultra. This is true in Receiver 2 as well, although humorously described in the notes contradicting each other when you first receive either weapon type. In gameplay terms, this means that you have a higher rate of fire and generally higher magazine capacity with automatics and an overall better accuracy with most of them, whereas you don't have the hassle of dealing with gems on revolvers. Downside is, they may be a bit less accurate and only occasionally have 6 shots with all revolvers of the game. Why occasionally you ask? This may become a problem. Sometimes you spawn with a magazine or a cylinder that cannot hold the number of birds you expect. With revolvers, you cannot remedy this problem completely, as you cannot find another weapon in the same level, but you can try to circumvent it. Not all revolvers are built equally. They either cycle the next chamber clockwise or counterclockwise. With experimentation, you can find out how your revolver cylinder rotates and prepare it accordingly. But for the love of God, remember proper handling etiquette of weapons. Keep your gun empty during that no one likes wasted ammo, either on the ground or in you. Novice shooters sometimes assume a gun is safe just because no magazine is fitted, with tragic results. Oh, I'm sorry, I did not mention the latest feature of Receiver 2 yet. Shooting yourself in the foot. Guns are dangerous, especially if they have a magazine fitted around in a chamber and a pull back hammer ready to hit the firing pin. So you have two choices here. Do you holster your weapon slowly by holding the button for it longer? Or do you try to make your gun secure? Revolvers are easy. Pull the hammer back, pull the trigger and after a short time let go of the hammer slowly. Your revolver is secure, it is that easy. Automatics have a few more mechanisms in place, be it a safety switch, a decocking lever, and of course the magazine. Start with the easy stuff. Eject your magazine. Now pull the slide and release. The bullet gets ejected and the gun cannot fire anymore. Reinsert the magazine and good job. You could even catch the bullet as you wreck the slide with G for extra style and smoothness points. 
As you have to fight an enemy, you still have to remember to rack the slide to chamber, but at least you have two hands free to load a magazine or even hold a flashlight in your teeth while doing so. Now for the variants. Uncock the hammer, similar to a revolver, keeps the bullet in the chamber, but still a bit dodgy. Get caught in some bush and the hammer may just get pulled by a branch. Or flick the safety switch. If there is, some weapons may also have that mechanism as the only one to safely store the weapon, so stay aware. The third option, rack the slide, flick the slide catch release so that the slide is locked back. Pretty good. You can find ammo scattered on the ground at disabled turrets or in floating balloons that you can shoot in a line. Efficient. Speaking of ammo and hurting yourself, you may survive a shot into your leg by yourself. But you do that a second time or get shot by a turret once, you are dead. I'm an idiot. There are no med kits and if you use high caliber weaponry like a desert eagle, you have no second chance after your first accidental discharge. Okay, enough guns. What about the tapes? During a level you have to find a certain amount of tapes to progress to the next. When the mind kill comes, you will likely have forgotten everything about your own life before entering the post mind kill environment. But everything that has become intuition, everything you've made a part of your inner self, the threat, is unable to erase. Every tape is a bit of knowledge uncovered about the world you inhabit, weapon exercises and other things not of direct relevance, at first. There are floppy disks scattered around, which reveal side stories and show the lives of other people suffering the same fate as you, as well as secret routes you can take to make your life scavenging for ammo just that bit easier. Simple enough. But what about the main story? In Receiver 2, you play as a cardboard cutout person. That is not really a joke. You begin the game being thrown into the deep end. You don't know where you are, but you survived something only under the name of Mind Kill, with the threat hunting down the last human survivors. Your only objective is to find tapes to advance your enlightenment. Without revealing too much info, you are part of a group called Receivers. Basically a fight club, but with guns and an obsession of being free of corrupting or manipulating media. But as you collect more tapes, you learn more and as a certain tape says... The media is a threat. We have a technique to help. We use tapes as part of this technique. You must listen to them to advance. Now, how can one tape listened to once possibly have an impact in the face of a lifetime of accumulated deception? It can only have the smallest effect, but even that small effect can be built on. If you listen to that tape 100 times, you may notice a difference in how you feel. If you listen to the tape a, a thousand times, you will be transformed. And if you listen to the tape a million times, you will become more than human, an awakened receiver. Listen to as many tapes as you can. Listen to them as often as you can. It will be wholesome, don't worry. No religious background there, I promise. If you don't want spawners pertaining gameplay and story, go there. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Follow me. So to understand what is going on with the receivers, you have to have a few runs under your belt and somewhat of a glossary with you. So here it is, just a few words to get you started. The mind kill is the starting point of the game. People die to it, or vanish because of it, with you left stranded in this world. Are you immune? Did the threat not notice you? Is it still happening? Either way, this world is called the Dreaming. A state where you are safe from said mind kill, but not safe from the threat spawning kill drones. Basically just Samsung and Amazon Express services working together to either put a bullet into your body, or airborne taser to your face. 
The tapes are a key part in your journey to ascend, or more likely to escape the minefield fully. No receiver has fully achieved that state yet, so better get going. The tapes you collect sometimes mention mind tech, techniques to strengthen yourself and your mind against the malicious media the threat tries to fling at you. As you collect more and more tapes, you learn about the three realities A, B and C, but facts remain vague. On the other hand, the meaning of the messages becomes a bit clearer. You understand how to read the intention the receivers have with some of the tapes, but how does that pertain to you? The threat will not need to kill us if it can get us to shoot each other. So it's critical to positively identify or, or PID your targets. Now imagine this scenario. You're woken up by a crash in the night and you take out your gun to investigate. You see a shadowy figure lurching towards you. You open fire and it's down on the ground. You're a hero. You defended your household. Or did you? For all you know, it was a family member stumbling around in the dark, or your neighbor got drunk and thought your house was his, or, you know, a police officer read the address wrong on a warrant. In the dark, a gun without a flashlight is worse than useless. A recipe for tragedy. Okay, so they say you look at what you aim first before you shoot. That sounds simple enough, so why don't we think about that more when we are in that situation? One tape in particular shows that the founding principles of the receivers are not in rebellion against some kind of government, but compassion, personal, physical and mental well-being and understanding of people and things happening around them and accepting them, to make the best of a bad situation, so to speak. Mind tech is a system. Built into this system is the ability to grow, change and reproduce. The threat is a similar system grown unimaginably complex. Upon awakening, humans and mind tech, like the mind and the body, will become one. This is what the system was created for. To uplift you. You cannot quite control a baseball smashing your window, but you can understand that the children that did it may not have done so on purpose. Now the only thing left is to carry on, pick up the pieces, repair the window the best you can. Receivers, of course, are not always pacifists, but only if there is no other choice and if they are absolutely sure they do not hurt innocent bystanders. The floppy disks describe the life of the other receivers before and during the might kill event. One in particular mentioning someone that has materialized an apple by remembering and focusing on the tastes, looks and texture of said apple and then it appeared. This seems to imply that even receivers have a kind of power inside the dreaming to craft or think of their own ammo. It is one case where this is referenced, but if you look at the loading screen where you also get your gun, you materialize in a location, you manifest a gun. You see where I'm going with this? Your character in game has the same ability too, even if it's not perfect. Another floppy disk story is about a soldier doing yoga in a park. Receivers don't just hand out pamphlets of their ideals to anyone. He notices a woman hearing a noise and when pressing her about it, she just told him to stop watching too much TV. After cutting down on TV and internet time, he did actually feel a bit better. And over the next few months, he as well heard the noise. As such, the yoga teacher gave him a cassette tape. So he started to listen to it, while co-workers started ripping on him about it. It gives you cancer, it is a sign of an anti-handicapped Kate group, and other things. Though he still continued listening and learning. After trying to dupe tapes to advance training himself in secret, he soon went to a recreation center. Inside, he found he could apply himself and his skills very well there, as it was repurposed as a training camp like in the military. He had a place to be with the receivers. But his training, dictating indirect and heavy duty approaches were needed to clear just a single room, was not quite appreciated here. What if you only had a pistol? He would have to learn a few things from scratch, and soon. The mind kill was upon them and after a few months he would have to find the woman he trained with and found a friend in, using the skills and mind tech he has learned by going through dreaming after surviving the mind kill. 
Mind tag and other terms I have mentioned before the spoiler tag undergo a transformation in the definition the more you play. What definition it may be for you will be different from mine, but here's what I think. Mind tag is a technique to shield yourself from the threat, but it is more akin to a mantra to shield yourself from malicious thoughts or even people. The threat, on the other hand, is not really turrets, an Amazon Express service turned Terminator or Shodan mocking and hunting you. More like sad malicious thoughts or persons. Starting from roundabout sleepwalker difficulty, which is level 3 out of 5, they can manifest in other ways. Before I talked about chambers being blocked or magazines not being able to be utilized at full capacity. They can corrupt the very thing you seek knowledge from. Tapes. I'm so sorry. I've always been such a disappointment. I would have just kept getting more pathetic. I can't stand to be a burden on you any longer. I hope one day you can forgive me. I love you. No. No. Stop. No! <clears throat> this is a high but also low point of the game. As soon as you learn how to survive red tapes and defend yourself against them, they are basically another thing to collect. They had shock value. But once it is over, it feels underwhelming every time you collect one and survive it. Because now you know what to do to not die to it. At least you can disable them. Same as the flinching or my functions. Oh. Okay. I escaped then. Brilliant. I love it when I do that. Legs, yes. Bow tie. Cool. I can buy affairs. Lorewise, the receiver that speaks with red tapes has very different mannerisms of speaking. More emotional, shaky, not focused on passing on knowledge. Self-hatred, hatred against the world or even just despair at the state of it. That, in my humble opinion, is brilliant from a lore building point, even if macabre, showing suffering not only in text but also tone. After surviving a thread tape, you also get a thread tape recovery entry that you can listen to, that has to receive and narrating the events before and after attempted suicides of the persons and their career and path forward. Most, if not all of them, are or have become receivers by that point. The pictures of the levels, who would have guessed, resemble an eye, going from glazed over and not aware at all, to fully aware and focused at the end of the game. It's a neat detail, not only covering overall game progress, but also giving the image of actually acquiring insight and knowledge through the tapes. Speaking of game progress, since finding the tapes and listening to them is part of the journey, I would like you to listen to the final tape. If you accept that the threat is real, and that reality A is the true reality, then you are ready for the final insight. You have completed this initiation. You are now a receiver. The game closes after this, signifying the end of the dreaming for you, the end of being trapped, and you finally gaining insight. You as in you, have become a receiver. It is time for some theories about the three realities spoken about in game. Bear in mind, those are completely subjective and others can come to different conclusions. Reality C is life. That's it. Just you dealing with everyday chaos, interacting with other people. Reality B is the game, giving you food for thought, through its tapes and a superficially simple but also increasingly complex gameplay loop fed by looking for ammo and trying to avoid or dispose of turrets, drones and finding creative ways to navigate the levels. 
Reality A is basically your mind, your mumbo jumbo astral self dealing with the other two realities and itself to a degree. Every interaction in life or in the game, however small, can affect your mind. That person you had small talk with on an elevator, that food you just ate or will eat. Even chatting over the internet and watching this video, your mind processes all of this and makes its conclusions. The cover of some of the soundtrack songs is also telling of its educational purpose. Be strong in here, to be strong out there. Receiver 2 is a game that comes packaged with plenty of messages, but to be honest, if I were to give you three final insights, it would be along the lines of this. Each receiver will train with a core mind tech. This functions as a checklist and readies the mind for action. It allows you to break from a reactive cycle caused by outside influence and allows you to regain control. Like all mind tech, your core is a sequence of thoughts. Where are you? What is your name? What is today's date? What? is your firearm. Then take a deep breath and listen. The threat has buried a caustic idea deep in our collective psyche. That one mistake undoes all previous effort. That somehow the failures count much more than the successes. That temporary setbacks are permanent or that permanent setbacks are the same as no progress at all. The fundamental process of accomplishing any goal is to be able to overcome the inevitable setbacks. Focus your mind's eye on this universal process. This setback has given you the opportunity to train the foundational skill that all skills are built on, grit. When explorers die of dehydration, their water bottles are usually not empty. They were saving their resources for later when it got really bad. When the threat kills people by suicide, it usually turns out that they never asked their family or, or friends for help. They were saving that for later, when it got really bad. If you are under attack by the threat, ask for help now. There is no later. If your friend makes a joke about hurting themselves, it might just be that, a joke. Or it might be their last cry for help before they are killed by the threat. Get them alone later, ask about it, and really listen to their answer. It's probably nothing, but in this case it's, it's so much better to have 10 false positives than one false negative. Receiver 2 is like the homeless person as you sit at the bench in a park. He may spout random things most of the time that you don't quite relate to, but sometimes he gives a few bits of wisdom or his experience of life you can adapt to your own situation. It also feels like you don't buy a game about guns while having no manual for it, you buy a game about having a spiritual journey with guns as your daily routine. They're always there, and it is about time to learn they're only as dangerous as the person wielding them. Come to think of it. Is this what the developers want us to believe they are? Crazy people that have made a game about a pseudo fight club but in the end want to just bring people together? If so, I can get behind that. Thank you for watching. I know I did not cover the compound at all, though I wanted to focus on the main game for my first review and the script already feels all over the place as it is. There are also a few more stories on the floppy disk, though my focus was on the aspects the game tries to educate. Not just in game, but life as well. Vigilance, compassion, have for media usage and, probably most important, independent thought. I'm trying to stream every few days on YouTube, playing various games with and without friends. You may be inclined to watch. Plenty of genres to cover. Adventure, strategy, MOBAs, shooters. Anything in between. 
and I can answer questions in both German and English. If there are any questions in the comments, I can try to get around to them on the next video or stream. Whenever that is, though I try to keep the schedule a bit tighter and after publishing this video I have a fair bit more space on the PC for recording. This video was mostly inspired by Power of Singles, Mandalore Gaming and CBLM's game reviews. Thank you for your videos, they are entertaining to watch, very informative and insightful. Please, that concerns all of you, stay safe in times such as these. That's it for now. See you soon, be it on streams here on YouTube or the next video.